Maine is blooming with wildlife. From the majestic moose to the ever-soaring eagle, Maine is the essence of life. And around me, you see only a fraction of the forest that many plants and animals call home. Hey, I call this place home too, and you're trespassing! <laughs> However, there are many animals that are at risk of never being able to call this great state home again. Take the Canada lynx, the piping plover, and the vet tern, for example. All three of these are on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's endangered species list. You're going to be on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's dead list if you don't get off my land soon! <laughs> However, m most of the animals on the list do not call the forest their home at all. They live here! Ah! In today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at Maine's endangered species. But first, we better warm up! The lynx is the only land mammal on the list. Easily mistaken for the bobcat, they are very similar in appearance. However, there are subtle differences that can help you identify what you're looking at. The candle lynx will have tufts on the tip of its ears, as well as longer, slender legs. Woo, like me! They are also very elusive and hard to find. And just like most cats, they are both active at night. Just like me. <laughs> The lynx's main food source is snowshoe hair, and they rely heavily on them for their own survival. If the snowshoe hare population declines, so does that of the lynx. So perhaps if we find snowshoe hare, we can find the lynx. Hey, Casey. Shh. I'm hunting rabbit. In the woodlot. What are you wearing? Nothing, because I'm a lynx, duh. Tough, tail. Uh, why? For your stupid video, that's why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't okay me. You're the one who wrote the script for it. I wasn't the one who designed the costumes, though. <laughs> See if I ever help her again. Because the piping clover has an amazing camouflage that splits both them and their eggs into the surrounding area. Plus they're endangered, so we probably don't even know what they look like. And seeing that it is March, the piping clover will probably begin nesting right about now. The piping plover are found here on the east coast, as well as in the Great Plains. They will nest from March up until it is time for them and their offspring to leave in come September. This is a replica of what the piping plover's nest would look like. Notice how we have the rocks surrounding the nest. Is it to ward off evil spirits? Sometimes it will also use shells. The nest is built right into the sand surface. And if the camouflage of the eggs does not keep away predators, the mother will fake a wing injury and lead the predator away from her eggs. I wonder if that would work at home. Hey Casey, what are you making? Nothing. Are those eggs? You want to make me some? side and flap her tail to create what is called a reed to lay her eggs in. Afterwards, the male will swim over and fertilize the eggs. This is when the smultification process begins. From an egg, the salmon begins to grow, the fish-like body. Alvin, die! The egg sac begins to disappear as the salmon begins to turn into a fish. Buy small fish! Then, after three years, this multiplication process is complete. 
where this time the salmon will journey into unknown territory to open sea, where it will stay for up to five years before returning to the same stream that it was born in to spawn. So does that mean I have to use the same bed my parents used? I was just asking, gosh. What's wrong with people? There are four sea turtles on Maine's endangered species list. And we thought it was best to write a song to give the song to you. This year's song about sea turtle. If you want to help, you gotta listen and learn. Learn, learn, learn. <laughs> Sea turtles like the water. Oh yes, they do. They lay their eggs up on the shore. And dig a big hole and they put them in. But don't you go digging up any owl, you hear? Because if you do, we'll, we'll kick it in the shins. We're the protectors of what? Sea turtles. We're the protectors of what? Sea turtles. We're the protectors of what? Sea turtles. Let's start with the sea green turtle in Maine. When you think of green, these were the guys who were surfing the EAC. Let's flip things over to the loggerhead. The loggerhead, loggerhead. When you think of them, think, think of a big, big strong man. They're the guys who are chopping down the wood with their jaw, oh boy. Break through anything to get the meal. Just like these jaw her lips aren't sealed. What? Do you like me a lot? It's true. The Hawksbill tree, it's jealous just like the green. Got an interesting pattern on its back. They got bony external plates that overlap. These are called shoes, and it makes them look oh so cute. Finally, boys and girls, we come to the very last bunch. So get out your sticks and roll on that drum. This guy's different than all the rest. He's not even in the same family. He's a guest. When it comes to having goose, these guys totally lack. The guy we're talking about is the hefty leatherbacks. They're the fastest, biggest, piping turtles in the world, and they can hold their breath that long as a whale. Oh, I'll say what? I said they can hold their breath that long as a whale. They swim way down deep, about 4,000 feet. They can regulate the temperature at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. They're the only turtles that can tolerate the cold, and on top of that, they can get real old. Chicka chicka wow.